Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone from the Franklin County Board of Commissioners and the Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. I am Damika Withers, the Chief Economic Equity and Inclusion Officer at Franklin County Office of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. We want to thank the participants for joining this important conversation today. We want to thank our partners of Columbus Urban League, Minority Business Access Center, One Columbus, and Economic Development and Planning. The commissioner's approval of $2 million in financial assistance to minority businesses will allow businesses to continue their hard work in Franklin County communities. Minority, business have, minority businesses have struggled to pay wages, keep their doors open, and lack the resources to thrive in today's economy. We hope the discussion today will provide education, awareness, and information on access toward the success of minority businesses. At Franklin County, we are here to support the recovery and success of minority businesses with these wonderful partnerships that you will hear today. I know I will now turn it over to Jesse Marks, Regional Director of Minority Business Access Center. Jesse. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Demetra. Um, so again, Jesse Mark, uh, Regional Director for the Columbus Region uh, Minority Business Assistance Center, powered through the Columbus Urban League or hosted through the Columbus Urban League. I'm so happy to be here today, answer questions. Uh, thanks again for our partners in Franklin County. Uh, I'll be brief um, and I will actually hand it over to our president and CEO, Ms. Stephanie Hightower. Stephanie, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be brief as well. Uh, first, I just want to take this opportunity to thank the county commissioners, um, Administrator Wilson, uh, Jim Shimmer and all of the team over at the county for continuing to believe in this work and for being uh, and taking on a leadership role in our county to ensure that minority businesses and small businesses continue to thrive um, and to contribute to the economic vitality of our, uh, to, of our community. So again, just want to say thank you to the county commissioners, Franklin County, um, all of the officials for your assistance in helping us to continue this work. Uh, we really appreciate your faith in um, not really the Columbus Urban League, but in for black owned businesses in this community. Good morning, everyone. Um, uh, excited to see uh, so many uh, participants uh, logging on uh, to this important conversation uh, so that they can get information about how uh, the equity fund uh, can be able to give them um, the financial capital that they need to keep their business uh, up during this very challenging, prolonged time. Um, the clock continues to run on this um, COVID-19 pandemic. So Franklin County want to show through its works that when we talk about every resident every day, we do mean it. And minority businesses are important to Franklin County and Central Ohio. And as our population continues to grow, we wanna see the growth of black owned businesses keep up and catch up to that pace of growth. Uh, because we know if you, can be, if you build a business, you have the opportunity to build wealth. And if you're able to build wealth, you're able to improve the quality of life uh, in every zip code in this county if we're successful in our quest uh, to see uh, Black businesses grow and not only survive, but prosper in this community. So I thank you all for being on this call. I'm excited about the future in Franklin County, about the opportunities that we have to reach unprecedented heights through the growth of the equity fund uh, with the CDFI uh, that we all are committed to see built, which would be the first in the county's history that would be Franklin County based and specifically focused on providing opportunities for black and minority businesses uh, in Franklin County. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Uh, for everybody's benefit, uh, um, good morning. Uh, I'll start there. Uh, happy Friday morning, by the way. That's even better news. Um, I'm Jim Shimmer. I'm Franklin County's uh, Director of Economic Development and Planning, and 
uh, responsible for uh, a variety of different tasks uh, to help business and small business uh, and minority business uh, here in Franklin County. And, you know, it's a kind of an interesting uh, point that I will make this morning is the question of how did we get here? Uh, how are we on this call this morning? What's happened in the past to get us here? Uh, obviously, everyone is very aware that uh, COVID has had a uh, major impact on businesses across the board. And the truth of the matter is, is that 53% uh, of Black business owners who remained uh, open after COVID-19 saw their revenues drop by half um, compared to 30%, 37% of white owners. So it's obvious that, um, you know, the process of trying to assist small businesses through this pandemic is important, but specifically focusing in on minority businesses is maybe even more important. Uh, that's where we really need to, to look at uh, our, our health. And so why would we think about doing that? Well, one of the reasons that we would do that is that black businesses bring in average revenues of about a million dollars a year, a little over a million dollars a year, compared to about $6.4 million a year for non-black uh, businesses. But if we were able to focus on those minority black businesses, um, increase their average revenue to the level of non-black businesses, again, getting them up to that $6.4 million, it would increase the total revenue brought in by black businesses by $676 billion. It's enormous. And so just that increase of trying to push forward uh, with minority businesses, uh, according to the Brookings Institute, uh, would cause that incredible uh, change in, in revenues that would be coming in. So we're doing a couple of different things. And I, again, I, I wanna go back to how we got here. So in 2020, uh, the Franklin County uh, Business and Growth and Equity Alliance uh, was launched uh, and specifically the Franklin County Community Equity Fund was established. And so working with uh, Columbus Urban League and our partners, uh, we were able to uh, get approximately $2.4 million in grants uh, out to over 100 small businesses in uh, Franklin County. And that's an important thing because at that point in time, when we go back and think about where we were at COVID, nobody really had an idea what was going down, but we understood the place was burning down. You know, this was very, very serious at that point in time. And so obviously COVID has changed, it's evolved. Um, how we're gonna deal with businesses moving forward uh, is critically important, but truthfully, uh, the need has not gone away. So uh, the commissioners have uh, implemented really sort of a three-pronged approach as to how we're gonna continue to work with small businesses and specifically uh, black and minority businesses. The first of which was, um, the grants that we have made to the Columbus Urban League in the amount of uh, $1,050,000. Um, that money is going to be uh, given to small businesses who qualify for it. It's important to understand that the money just doesn't go to anybody. Uh, that money has to be qualified and placed. And so um, it will be an important part of how we're gonna continue on uh, to assist uh, businesses here in Franklin County. Additionally, the commissioners approved uh, $1.34 million uh, to uh, ECDI. And this is money that is coming out of the COVID uh, CDBG funds. And it's a little different because in this instance, what we're trying to do is get to job creation. So for every $35,000 lent, there's gonna be the requirement that one job be created. And I think that's something that uh, is, is an important uh, aspect of this as well is the job creation because we're really hopeful uh, that businesses are you know, stabilized and now beginning to grow a little bit. Uh, this fund will be able to uh, work through that. And additionally, I'll, I'll give you uh, a little teaser, if you will. Uh, last year, uh, we worked with the city of Columbus on the small business grant program. Uh, this was targeted for small businesses uh, only, or not, excuse me, not only, but in the city of Columbus, as well as the rest of Franklin County. And what we're gonna do uh, in October, hopefully, um, I think uh, Administrator Wilson will keep pushing me and <laughs> Assistant Director Janice will keep pushing me to get this program out the door. It's complicated, but uh, again, what we're gonna do this year is uh, we used East, uh, excuse me, we used Rev1 last year as our uh, main focus point for that program. We're gonna switch this year and use the Wells Foundation um, and specifically uh, Small Business Development Center. 
to get money out the door for people again who will be qualified for these dollars um, and, and granting up to $15,000 uh, for small businesses. So that three-pronged approach will hopefully allow us to provide assistance to um, the minority businesses as well as any other small business in Franklin County that needs assistance. But again, understanding the need for small business uh, as it relates to minority business, black owned businesses um, is, is a critical piece of this. And uh, we need to continue on and stabilize those because after COVID is gone, we hope we stand around and we look at a really rich, robust business community that has changed its dynamic nature and its color uh, will be more diverse and uh, we'll be able to get to more people as time goes on. So I guess as we will move along in this program, if there's specific questions that come up, I'm happy to answer them. But um, we, again, are really uh, mobilizing to try and continue our work uh, in this particular area. Sean, is it over to you? I think it might be. I think it's over to Melinda. Melinda. Good morning. Thank you everyone for participating. So glad to be here this morning and um, see all the participants that have joined us on this important call to talk about um, the wonderful opportunity we have here um, at the Columbus Urban League with our uh, the county and our other partners in making sure that African-American businesses and minority businesses are served um, during this uh, difficult time. Um, I um, have the privilege of working with uh, our Miss Brief program or, or, the, or every uh, class, as you all know, who is, it, who is helping to administer, who is administering the CDFI program, I mean, putting everything in place. So I have all the information and questions if you have them as we go throughout the program. Everyone before me assess such um, important, share such important information about why this is critical, what we've done. I can tell you over the past year, um, through this program, uh, through these programs that we've been administering for, for the business community, we've served um, nearly uh, 500 businesses in all types of ways through this program, not to mention the impact um, in the hundreds of businesses that they've touched. So this is having a, a, a sizable impact. Um, we're glad that you're here. Many of you um, on the call have already used our services at the impact um, and have also utilized our services that we have through the MSBRI program, which has a number of outreach and technical assistance initiatives. I, I advise you to continue doing that. Uh, as I've shared with my uh, partners and, and our collaborators in the businesses, business community, this is the, one of the most important times during the span of many of the lives of our, our minority bone businesses in that there are opportunities, even though it's a difficult time, there are many that are looking for ways to uh, mitigate the gap in, uh, the, in the ability to earn money. As uh, Jim Shimmer mentioned earlier, um, the average um, revenue generated by a white company far exceeds that of African-American or minority business. And we hope to close that gap. And these um, measures or tools are ways to do that, be it through the uh, CDFI that we'll be starting, or if it's through the um, loan assistance program, the loan assistance program that Jim talked about, or through um, the grants that the county has so graciously um, made available to minority and African-American businesses through our MSBRI program. So uh, we encourage, and I certainly encourage all minority businesses to look to um, our leadership who's done a phenomenal job and, and take advantage of them in a way that is helpful to the entire community, producing jobs, increasing wealth, and increasing opportunities for all of us in this community. So again, Melinda Carter, if you don't know me, I'm sure many of you do, if not, and I'm happy to serve as the Senior Vice President at the Columbus Service Thank you. That's it, Sean. <laughs> no, thanks, Melinda. Hi, I'm Sean Grant. I serve as the Chief Administrative Officer for the Columbus Partnership in One Columbus, and I am happy to be here today with all of the participants that are on the call and, and all of my cohorts in the effort to support minority businesses I see on the screen. Um, uh, Commission Administrator uh, Wilson, uh, Jim Shimmer, Jesse, Stephanie, Melinda, uh, thank you for your collaboration as we move these efforts forward. The reason that One Columbus is involved in this effort is because we know that we can't have a great community without strong minority businesses. We know that as we think about economic development, we have to think about how we elevate and scale and create, to Jim's point with regards to numbers, 
um, if we can create businesses and get them to parity with our um, uh, majority community colleagues, we know what the impact can be in our community. And if we're going to have the most prosperous community in the nation, um, which is our community vision, our community goal, we have to lift up our minority businesses as a whole. The efforts with Franklin County and with the Columbus Urban League are an effort to do that, um, pulling together not only the work from the governmental sector, but pulling the private sector into the conversation. Lots of times the governmental sector will be out there and they'll, they'll fl stick their flag in the ground and they're out there on their own by one Columbus joining with the Columbus Urban League to say, no, we're in this together. And we have a, a culturally competent partner in the Urban League to help drive some of this stuff and touch the community in ways that one Columbus by itself could never do. And so this is why we're here. We know the importance of minority businesses to this community and from an economic perspective. But more importantly, this panel and these kinds of conversations, getting information out to those minority businesses that we know one of the things that they're asking for is information. Where do I go to find out what's going on? Where do I go to find out about resources? And the Minority Business Assistance Center that Jesse's leading is an important piece of that. Um, the Urban League serving as a, a, a community um, catalyst for this information, partnering with Minority Business Assistance Center is huge. And it provides a way for us to get information out, to get resources out. That's why Franklin County um, partnered with the Columbus Urban League to get these dollars out the door. The work that we did last year during COVID was so important during a time when, as Jim said, things were burning down and we came together and moved quickly to organize around how do we get these dollars out the door as quickly as possible to the folks that needed them the most. Um, we moved quickly to do that, leveraging the expertise of Melinda and Avery and, and, and Franklin County in order to get, get these dollars out there. And we worked really hard to do that last year. I love the fact that we're doubling down on it again this year because our businesses are still being affected by them disproportionately to the broader community. And so this is a way for us to, um, we're, we're actually putting a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound um, and, and, and trying to stop the bleeding. We know that this isn't the whole answer, but it's part of it. And as we continue to build, um, on these efforts with the CDFI and other initiatives that we're trying to move forward, um, we're going to start to close the gap in terms of access, in terms of information, in terms of scaling our businesses to the to to parity with our our, our majority community partners. And so, these efforts um, will make our community one of the one of the most prosperous communities in the in the nation, and that is our goal. And we know that we can't do that. Um, by focusing on the top end of the market, focusing on the folks that already have the dollars. We have to focus on those businesses that are at the lower um, um, rung of the ladder and helping them to elevate and lift themselves up. So it is a pleasure to be here. I'm happy to answer any questions that, that may come up on the panel, but um, it's great working with Franklin County and the Columbus Urban League and the leadership by um, Administrator Wilson and Stephanie Hightower. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, we do have a question from the Q&A. Um, can minority-owned companies who received funding last year apply to yeah, our partners no. at Columbus Urban League? Um, would you like me to jump in the challenge? Hello, can you hear me? Hey, Melinda, why don't you go ahead and answer yeah. that? I'll yeah. Uh, we, we, we will um, review um, each application, but at this time we are not encouraging people who applied last year to apply for this. So um, we haven't said no, they cannot be awarded, but certainly our priority is to make sure that we get to people that have not been uh, awarded um, before. So for example, on that, when uh, the, the city and small and city county small business uh, grant program gets launched here, um, next few weeks. Uh, I just uh, would ask that folks on the call, keep your eyes open for that. Uh, we're in the process of putting it together. Um, it's, it'll be a tiny bit different, but uh, you know, anybody that puts these programs together, um, they are complicated and, and trying to figure out the federal funding sources and how the money can actually be used is really important. Um, but the key thing is gonna be that um, the need is gonna to have to be shown. And so there will be an application process that you'll have to go through, uh, same as you would with uh, Columbus Urban League. And uh, in that process, then um, 
a transparent committee, meaning a group of citizens are gonna make a decision about who gets funded and who doesn't get funded. But here's the key. Um, we had so much demand last year uh, that we had, and I think the Urban League did as well, uh, for the city and county program, uh, we had a hundred businesses that did not get funded because we ran out of money. Uh, they have moved to the top of the queue uh, for uh, this next round. And um, as part of that, they're gonna be uh, actually what we're gonna call the first wave of funding that we're gonna take a look at and try to get the, the dollars out to. So uh, it'll be an important part of it. But um, again, as we did in the past, um, we will be working with uh, community organizations uh, throughout Franklin County and the city of Columbus that can help guide you and help steer you. Uh, Urban League is one of those for sure. Um, there'll be a lot of other um, uh, community organizations that will assist us to make sure that the businesses have uh, easy access uh, to get their applications submitted. So, uh, but again, as I said, stay tuned for that. It'll be coming up here uh, in, in the next little while. And um, uh, been a pretty good process. I think last year we did really well uh, working through the dollars that we have, but. Uh, again, this year, um, there'll be some more money available uh, through the county and the city. Uh, and uh, there are some specifications, but that'll be coming to you in the near future. Yeah, Jim, I was going to also add that, as a matter of fact, the reason why I said that about the, when I said that it's not likely, we have, we could put $200 million out right now with the applications that were not able to be um, grant the people that had applied and were, could be approved. So the need is great. And um, we're going to try to do everything we can to reach as many as we can. But again, I think we have about $200 million of applicants from last time, and certainly they rise to the top of the list. And again, as Jim said, we also have ESO, which are our community partners who do a very um, thorough job of reviewing the applications, making everything sure that everything is order, in order, and also making sure that we have um, our, our you'll, you'll learn, learn more about it, but the way we have divided it, uh, the the um, buckets of dollars to what businesses and what kind of businesses make it really equitable so that we're spreading it across all lines of new businesses, businesses earning up to a certain amount of money or a certain number of employees. So we will share all the information. I know someone in the chat asked for contact information. Um, you can contact the um, Urban League um, or you can contact the, um, which is the MSBRI office or the um, MBAC which is Jesse Mars office that can lead you to the right place. And we'll send out that, that contact information directly to everyone who's been on this call this morning. So you'll receive that in names as well. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. We have some more questions in the Q&A. Question is, what if um, they started their business in 2021? Are they eligible for any funding? If you could talk about a little bit about the requirements for applying. You're eligible for, um, if you started um, your business, it could be a new business actually for new businesses and they could have started um, uh, as long as they started prior to the um, COVID or during COVID actually. So you, there's, they, the requirements is gonna be in three, two pots, small grants up to $15,000 to micro lenders in operation for two or more years with less than 25 employees for working capital, payroll supplies, or whatever is necessary to keep your business open. And then small grants for up to $10,000 available um, to new businesses who have started since the onset of COVID. Um, the, we expect that the application period will begin in October um, of this year, we expect that. And that's it, and again, we can send out more information. Okay, let's see. Um, the question, what financial capital is available to businesses that are struggling especially businesses that had never received any financial uh, financial support last year. I know you talked about a little bit about the process, but can you just break it down a little bit more about what, um, what is needed on the application or what information should be provided? Well, they're gonna need any information they would do, use it to apply for a loan, tax records, information regarding showing that you lost money during COVID, showing the impact, the number of employees. It's the typical information that you would use when seeking financial assistance from any um, agency, whether it be a bank or something. So I would say that typical information, you know, your revenue, your, you know, anticipated revenue. I mean, it's a very thorough 
examination of the state of your business. We don't want, we want to make sure that we save businesses, not businesses that are not, um, you know, likely to survive. Well, I shouldn't say that, but there's information that we require. It's not like getting a bank loan, but certainly we do our due diligence in making sure that, the, that, that it's a sound decision to make this investment in your business. So I would say um, the, the, the information that's needed is not unlike information that we require for a bank. Of course, we do a lot of handholding. We assign someone specifically to you to work with you to get through the process. And we try to do everything we, we can. We understand and are cognizant of the things that you're going through right now and trying to get your business afloat and do that. So we'll help you, but you do need um, appropriate records um, as you would to a financial institution. Uh, you know, again, we, we do handholding and we make sure uh, we have what we need, but um, you have, we hope to, that you have what we need, but we, we will be asking um, information for you from you to make sure that we're making a good investment. I think one, one of the, the things, I, I'm sorry, Jim, um, Melinda, I think it's probably important that one of the distinctions is that we are evaluating the business, right? At the end of the day, we are evaluating the needs of the business. Um, it's the, the impact that COVID has had on the business, the financial performance of the business. Um, so the, what's different is that different from a financial institution is that we're not running credit. And yeah. so that's an, important, that, that's an important distinction that um, that we are evaluating the business, not you as a as an individual, but the business. Thank you. As John knows I'm not a banker, thank God he's a financial I'm not, but you're right. There's no credit um, for it. What well, just what John said. So thank you. Yeah, but the one thing I do want to mention too, um, this is sort of uh, these programs we've mentioned, uh, the grant programs are for the immediate need, but for a long-term need, again, I talked about the fact that uh, going forward, we're really going to need to stabilize businesses. And one of the ways we're going to do that is the creation of a CDFI, which is a Community Development Finance Institute, uh, that will be uh, making standard loans. Uh, and, and I guess I say standard in that sense, but uh, again, with a focus on minority-owned uh, businesses uh, going forward. And so that is going to be critically important because I think what the data has shown to us pretty clearly is the fact that uh, minority businesses in general um, receive less loans uh, and are approved for fewer loans uh, than their white counterparts, for example. Uh, and so in uh, Columbus Franklin County, we wanna try and make it a far more equitable situation when you go in and you need a loan. And so uh, the CDFI, um, Community Development Finance Institute will be stood up to provide that purpose. But again, that's a long-term solution as businesses get stabilized, as they grow. I've seen a number of people in the chat saying that their businesses are growing. Uh, you're gonna need long-term capital to keep going and equity to keep going uh, as you move along. And the CDFI will be created for that reason and purpose. And we expect that the CDFI will be um, having a small microloan products by the in the fourth quarter of this year, early next year. So hopefully that will be in place and we'll be able to do the micro lending from the CDFI um, that the Alliance is establishing on the fourth quarter or the first quarter of next year. Uh, this is Kenneth Wilson, County Administrator. I also want to point out, I saw one uh, question, I believe, coming in chat. Um, this, uh, these two initiatives aren't targeted at our nonprofit partners. We realize that our nonprofit organizations in the community um, has gone through similar trauma during this pandemic. Uh, but the county uh, has a uh, community funding initiative that was approved on September the 14th, where $5 million is available uh, through that program for um, assistance to nonprofit business. So that is being administered directly through uh, Franklin County's uh, Community Partnerships Agency. Thank you, Commis Commissioner, <laughs> County Administrator Wilson. Um, Jim, there were some questions. Um, people, I guess, are still wanted to know, is there grant money, is it loan? If you could just describe the two um, programs that we have, one is a grant and one is a loan. Just to go over that again, please. Yeah, and I'm sorry, it is a tiny bit confusing here this morning, but um, 
the, the key thing is, again, we're building this uh, back and, and we're recapitalizing some of the programs that we have. So uh, for um, the Columbus Urban Leagues programs, those are grant programs. Uh, we will also have a uh, future grant program. Again, I've mentioned this a couple of times now and uh, stay tuned, uh, which will be a city county uh, small business grant program. The loan program that we have funded uh, will be coming through ECDI. And that's the one for a uh, case where a business is gonna grow enough that they will have a new employee. So they're gonna be lent one, uh, excuse me, $35,000 for one job created. So, um, you know, you have the ability to grow your business that way, but that is a loan. And, uh, but truthfully, you know, the thing is that the loan environment right now is, is, is amazing. Uh, those loans that are coming out of ECDI are at 1%. So, uh, you know, people think, oh, it's a loan. You know, I can't do a loan. Well, it, they're doable uh, and they're practical right now. And it may, and truthfully, going forward in the future somewhere, it may not ever look like this again. But those loans from ECDI are at 1%. So um, the dollars are out there. Um, and uh, don't be afraid of thinking about uh, a loan in that situation from ECDI. Uh, and um, again, the, the grant programs uh, are out there. The established one right now uh, is with Columbus Urban League. Uh, and in the very near future, you will see one from the city of Columbus and Franklin County. Okay, I was also mentioning what Jim, of course, is exactly right to say the least, but I was also, when I mentioned the loan from the, from the Urban League side, I was talking about the CDFI once it's up and running, we have the small micro loans. Uh, but also I want to say this, that the Urban League is committed to helping minority businesses, African-American businesses navigate the financial issues, that, the financial uh, uh, things that they need to deal with in terms of their business growth and development. So our team, um, be it Avery and, and her, uh, all the work that she does, and Jesse Marks at the MBAC, and our other uh, programs, we will find loan products, financial assistance, places to refer you. We... Um, do a good job of canvassing the community and the area with respect to how we can help you um, target the right um, um, thing that you need, product you need, and try to find. Or oh, we're out there constantly. Jesse has done a phenomenal job as well as Avery in finding new ways that we can, new products that we can bring, or new opportunities to meet. So please look at us for not only the products we have here that you see may help you, but if there's something that you think we you, you need to information about. That is what we do. We try to be an authority on what is available and, and, and accessible and make it accessible to the businesses that we serve. I see one question in yeah. the chat. Yeah. Uh, hello, is the funding for uh, businesses, is there funding for businesses outside of Franklin County? Programs that we're talking about, uh, at least from the city and the county, are definitely inside Franklin County. But critical is it is for the entire county. So uh, you have the ability to apply if you're in Grove City or uh, Worthington, somewhere else that's not uh, specifically related within the city of Columbus. Um, we will be doing the grant program outside areas as well for the entire county. If I could add, I know that the um, <clears throat> state of Ohio has some uh, programs and some additional loan products that are getting ready to be rolled out here uh, within the next several weeks as well. Um, so uh, I, I want to encourage everybody to make sure that they're getting our information, uh, cul.org. Uh, if you want to get to uh, my to uh, the MBAX page, it's backslash MBAC. Uh, so cul.org backslash MBAC. Then you can stay on top of all of the uh, news releases and everything that we have going on, uh, whether it be city, county, or state. Thank you, Jesse. Just scrolling through the questions. You have any? You answered the amount, um, the, the rate of the Loans, Jim.
The question is, um, can a company apply for both the grant and the loan programs? Or are they limited to one? Do we know that I'll answer? Just, yeah, I'll go ahead and, and answer that, at least from uh, the county standpoint. Uh, for the grant program, yes, you would be able to uh, apply for both. Um, again, it's going to be a bit different in terms of the information that you'll have to provide, but yes, that's a possibility. Um, the other thing that uh, we want to try and make certain of is, is, again, I think, I'm, I'm not sure who said it, but uh, this is going to be based on, um, you know, the uh, qualifications of, of the business uh, and what it needs. Um, I think the critical thing is, is that uh, if you came in to apply it for the Columbus Urban Leagues program um, and the City of Columbus and Franklin County's uh, grant program, and you said in both applications, I need money for payroll, uh, that we won't be able to fund both of those. Um, it will just be one area. It's going to have to be uh, focused in on a different need if you are looking at different programs. Also, I would say that we're very involved in these programs as well. Um, I know in my capacity, my previous capacity, and also um, uh, we, I have also served on some of the review committees at the city being involved in the stream of looking at those. So, you know, it's a small community uh, of us. And so we know, uh, we I don't discourage people from applying in both places, as Jim said, but certainly we have an idea of, of where the company's chances are best and where we want to, where it's going to be funded. So it's not like you're going to get funding from the city and then from, from the county. And then, uh, I mean, so um, be mindful of that. I mean, we all know um, each other and I know no one's trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes, but of course you can apply everywhere which makes sense, but we're gonna make sure again that um, we are serving as many businesses as we can across all of them. We all are very integrated in terms of uh, making sure that we talk and we're usually a part of um, the review process for, for most of, uh, of the things we've been talking about this morning, wherever they are, the city, uh, county, um, of course, the urban league is tied directly to county the city as well. Thank you. Thank you, Melinda. There is a question. Will the application be available online? Ours is. Ours, 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 all of our information uh, for the application for the um, grant pro program is online. Okay. And would a proposal or business plan be required with the application? A business plan is not required, but as Sean said, we're looking at the business, not the credit. So there's going to be information required about the business. It may not be a business plan, technical business plan, but certainly um, there will be some of that information required for the grant, as we did last time. So um, I would suggest that, that there's some pre preparation with respect to a, you know, I don't want to say a full book business plan and have someone go and spend 3000 4000 upwards to get that if you don't have it in place, but you do need to have um, an explanation and a summary and an idea of your business. And we need to be um, able to, to, you know, review that. Yeah, I think I think especially if it's a new business, obviously that's that's something that uh, as Absolutely. we go through the evaluation process, that's an that's going to be an important piece of it because we need to understand what the business is and is it really a business? And so that's that that's important for those companies that are coming that are that are newly formed um, within the last year. And I'm gonna I would be remiss if I didn't say this <laughs> from the business development side of of me. Uh, a lot of these businesses are new and they're, they're, they're getting their feet underneath them uh, and they're going to start to grow. But you also really need to remember that if you're going to be theoretically, and I hope this will happen for everybody in business for a long time, uh, making certain that you think about the business plan is going to be a critical part because somewhere along the line, you may have to go out to a bank uh, and say, okay, we'd like a loan for uh, major expansion or whatever the case is. And the business plan is gonna be a big part of what you're doing. Um, that's always a, a really sort of a fundamental thing for, for guidance for not only uh, for yourself as a business, it's getting up and running and, you're, and you've got a plan out there uh, that is important to get it on paper so that you have the ability to share that with a bank in the future and uh, make certain that you, you can grow that way. And sometimes I've seen uh, the small, especially entrepreneurial businesses, 
ah, I'm too busy for that. I got it, you know, I got it up here. I know exactly what I'm going to do and how I'm going to do it. Um, that's fine for you, but it may not be fine for a financial institution who's going to take the time and try to give you dollars based on some reason. And that reason can very well be the business plan that you put together. So I encourage you, if you can do it, that'll be great. But I understand, you know, some of you guys are small and you're getting started and I think that's fine. But um, I, I do uh, I think about this a lot because I think small business people sometimes are very intuitive. You know, I know what the market is. Nobody understands this better than I do. Um, and, you know, I, I think this business is going to grow and, and and then you walk into somebody's office and the banker's office that ask you for some very specific details associated with it. And you just, you don't have anything to back you up. You just say, oh, it's just a good idea that I have. Well, you gotta be a little bit more specific about it and be a little more focused on making sure that you have a foundation under you that uh, is gonna allow people to lend you money. And in this case, the granting of money is gonna be an important piece too. But uh, remember, uh, in that process, you are going to have to provide information about the business and you need to be organized. So. And it's so critical, but the main, I want to say that to, to, to Jim's point, and one thing I found over the years of dealing with businesses is not only is that important to see if you're financially secure, but the reason why you're financially secure is that you are, the idea is good, that the plan is good. So if you don't have a good business plan, um, he's right, not only for a financial institution, they're asking because they know that means the likelihood of you just being sustainable is greatly increased. Um, and so the business plan for minority business is critical. We did some work a few years ago with Cardinal and their MBA pro pro program as an internship and marketing is the biggest problem, one of the biggest problems that minority businesses have. We don't take time to market, so we're likely to fail, more likely to fail. So what Jim said about the business plan is absolutely critical. And that's one of the things we try to do urbanly is keep the people that get a grant from the loan, from the grant program or from, from any of our services as a control group to follow them and continue to make sure they have what they need. And Jim is 100% right that a business plan is absolutely crucial for sustained growth and development. Thank you. And I would also like to add too that these are some of the services that we provide through the Urban League and the MBAC. You know, um, you know, we do help people with financial readiness. You know, um, I, I myself, I have over 20 years of experience uh, working with people that were looking for money, uh, small and micro businesses. And, you know, I, I know what Bo doesn't know in a lot of cases, you know, for, you know, when, when people need to get access to capital and if they're not ready right now, what we can do is make sure that we put these places in, uh, in the, we can put the, the, the stones in place for people to get that access later on. But, you know, we do have the access to grant money. You know, it, the, the parameters are different from a grant side to a lending side. So, so there is that credit criteria that people are looking at on the lending side. But again, on the grant, on the grant piece, you know, it, it's more you telling your story. You know, uh, people talk about the business plan. It's that executive summary that you would need so that we can go as committee and figure out, you know, um, who gets what and how much, right? So uh, definitely reach out to the MBAC Center. We have the one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions, the financial readiness, and the technical assistance that can get you prepared to take your business to the next level, to, to either start up, stay up, or scale up, whichever phase you are in your business growth through this pandemic. Thank you, Jesse. I was gearing to mention all the services that the MBAC offers. Um, another question in the chat, um, are there any restrictions on what the loans um, can be used for? Melinda, do you want to take that? Thank you. I would say that because the loans from the, the um, eat from the CDFI will be micro loans. They could be used, be used for anything with respect to your business, op, um, sustaining your business. That is the micro loans that will be uh, administered by the CDFI, and we think there'll be about five hundred thousand, five hundred five thousand dollars. Sorry, um, initially. And uh, we'll be looking to expand the products, but right now, um, that's what they are. And I, I saw someone in the chat said, the Mr. Introductions, and you all did start start early because I was about three minutes late. But anyway, I'm Melinda Carter, and I'm happy to serve as the Senior Vice President at the Comus Urban League over um, programming. Um, so um, I, 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 that's who I am. Thank you. And I'm Jim Shimmer from Franklin County, but I do really appreciate something that I just learned this morning that you guys taught me. 
is that with no background that doesn't say who you are, nobody's going to know who I am. So uh, I need to do a better job of that in the future. And I think Jesse's got some a background that really is a good point. It illustrates where you're from. I hadn't even given that any thought, but I would probably do that in the future. So again, I'm with Franklin County. Did I have it, did I answer the question with respect to the loan product for the CDFI? And then Jim, you would the information they ask about the um, loan product. You have information for well, I think some of the things uh, you know, the CDFI will be a little different. Um, I'm just gonna talk about the city county grant program. Right. Uh, primarily what we've been finding is that uh uh, dollars are really used for uh, three different areas, uh, one of which is for payroll, uh, second of which is for um, uh, equipment uh, or inventory, uh, and the third one uh, can relate uh, directly back to, uh, uh, you know, PPE uh, needs for uh, how the company and business is dealing with COVID. Uh, and if there are needs uh, associated with that, that's a really important piece. Um, but again, I, I think each application is going to be individualized and uh, decisions will be made about uh, whether or not it's going to work. It'll be clarified for you as we move forward uh, in October. So uh, again, I would ask that you just have a little patience while we get that program uh, up and running and, and put together well with the city. Just had a question pop up in the chat, Jim, for you. Um, you mentioned that the Columbus Urban League was helping out with these programs, and I thought you mentioned about other groups. What will you clarify and provide an email for those other groups after this meeting, or will it be 100% through the Urban League? So there's uh, two again. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, again, uh, and I'm sorry for the confusion on this, but it is. Uh, complicated to some degree. We have a number of organizations that are out there currently. So uh, I mentioned uh, the city county uh, small business program and that it will be uh, run through the Wells Foundation. Uh, we'll be involved in setting that program up and being the fiscal uh, manager for that particular program along with the Small Business Development Center at uh, Columbus State. Uh, those will be the two groups that we are going to count on, the city and the county are going to count on to run that particular program. Uh, they will be putting it together. Uh, Melinda mentioned the ESOs, which are community-based organizations uh, that will assist small businesses to get into the pipeline and get in line. Um, and so those will be the, uh, the groups that we will primarily rely on for that particular program um, with the city and the county. Let's see, the recording um, can be sent out to all participants after the event. And we also have a brief survey of the event that asks some general questions and you can ask additional questions for that. I'm also gonna put my contact information in the chat if you have follow-up questions or need some more direction of today's presentation or just general questions, um, I can guide you to the participants or answer the questions for you. Um, do we have any closing mark from our presenters today? Charlie, I just wanna say that I think that, um, thank you for this opportunity and thank you for everyone who's participated. I know there's lots of, there's still lots of questions out there and we couldn't get to them all. I think that tapping into um, the Columbus Urban League, tapping into Jesse and his team, um, we can get those answered um, once the once the programs go live and once these dollars are start start moving in terms of applications and the like. I think you continue to reach out to those teams and um, we'll get all those answers to those questions um, as we go through the process. I think accessing those sites. Um, thank you, um, Marlies, for sharing that information. Um, 
And I think that um, these folks who have these questions, we can get these things answered really quickly. Um, there are answers to all of them, um, even though we might not have all had them all um, in, in front of us right at this point in time, but there is a method to the madness. Um, we will be processing as many as we can. Um, we have a backlog from last year, as Melinda mentioned, but um, we, we, are, we are trying to, with all of these efforts, get as much do many dollars out the door as possible in all kinds of ways, whether that's grants, whether that's loans. Um, we're trying to bring every tool to the table to get the money in the hands of the folks that need it the most. So um, bear with us. Um, you know, we ask for a little grace in the process and we'll, we'll continue to move this effort forward. Thank you. Thanks, John. And Marcus, I wanted to say, you know, this co coffee conversation started off a lot smaller. It's gotten a lot grander, <laughs> thanks to your work. <laughs> and I would really like to congratulate Jesse and the impact for the work they're doing. And um, they continue to amaze me. And um, our whole team and, and, and the partners that we've worked with, the county has been phenomenal in making sure that this message gets out the city. Um, we work with them as well. But certainly, um, I'm very, very proud and happy. Um, and pleased with um, that we can um, have these kind of collaborations that we can grow like this um, even during these difficult times. So um, I know Jesse um, is, is he's been on fire since we, we stole him. Um, and, and I'm so glad that he's joined us. And I'm so glad that the impact could host this uh, for the county. And Marlies, thank you so much for allowing us to do that. And we look forward to more and we look forward to helping um, be a, vo a voice and a place uh, that people can get information um, who need it. So again, thank you uh, very much. And, and congratulations, Jesse, on the, on the great work and congratulations to Marlies and, and for putting us uh, together. Thank you. Thank you kindly, Ms. B.B. Carter. Um, I, I wanna piggyback off of something that Marlies said uh, a couple of minutes ago about the survey. Um, it's very, very important. You know, we have uh, uh, over a hundred people that are on this call right now. Uh, please take the time to complete that survey. It's, it's critical mass for us as we develop these programs and, and are able to roll out additional resources to the community that you provide input so that we can take that and go back to the think tank and, and, and get creative with some ways that we can continue to help people out in the community that we serve. So uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, panelists. Uh, thank you, Marlene, for, for practicing this for us. And uh, good luck to everybody. And I look forward to speaking to every single person on this uh, 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 chat line so that we can uh, point you in the right direction to make sure that your success is uh is is handled properly i guess so um, thanks again everybody and I, my closing comments are that even though uh it sounds like doom and gloom you guys uh first of all thank you uh for your persistence and diligence and trying to move forward with a new uh business or uh business that you want to keep moving forward in uh, the optimist in me tells you that the marketplace is only going to get better, uh, that it is a good time to reset, rethink about where you want to head and uh, use these tools and uh, funding for that opportunity to grow your business so it stays around and, uh, you know, can be part of the, uh, the Columbus business community for a long, long time to come. But uh, I know how hard it is uh, having done small business development myself and having a small business myself in the past that you wake up every morning trying to figure out how am I going to get this done today? Well, as best we can in, in government uh, and uh, with our partners, we are going to try and assist you through that. Uh, but thank you for your, your you know, the, the ferocity you have to keep your business moving forward and growing and uh, we will assist you in whatever way we can to keep that energy alive. Thanks.